Welcome to the Deep Dive, where we cut through the noise and get you straight to what truly matters. Today, we're plunging into a really fascinating company, Navita Semiconductor. Fascinating and uh, surrounded by a lot of uncertainty. I mean, imagine this, right. a stock trading around $5.86, give or take. Right, but Wall Street just cannot seem to agree on where it's heading. Not at all. Analyst price targets are swinging wildly from, what, a really pessimistic $1.50? All the way up to a sky-high $26.76. That's a massive range. It really is. So is Navitas this, you know, game-changing disruptor ready to power the AI revolution? Or is it maybe a risky bet, maybe overvalued? That's the puzzle we're here to unravel for you. Our subject is Navitas Semiconductor, NASDAQ Q ticker NVTS. And the core story is this bold strategic pivot they're making. Yeah, they're trying to shift from, well, basically powering your phone charger. And to potentially fueling the, let's face it, multi-trillion dollar AI future. A huge jump. And our mission in this deep dive is to investigate if their tech this advanced gallium nitride, gain, and silicon carbide, scenic, can genuinely make them a foundational player in high-performance computing. We'll dissect that shift, you know, from consumer electronics into these really demanding AI data center and energy markets, give you the full picture. Exactly. And just for you, our listener, remember, this deep dive is part of the exclusive S&P 500 coverage from Stock Analytics AI. Yeah. It's your shortcut to being really well-informed on these critical market players. So let's start unpacking this. We need to understand what makes Navitas tick. Let's dive into chapter one, business understanding. Okay, so core business. Navitas runs on a Fabless model. Fabless, meaning they don't own the factories, right? Like Apple. Pretty much, yeah. They focus on the R&D, the circuit design, the marketing, the brainy stuff. Manufacturing gets outsourced. Saves a ton on capital, I imagine. Exactly. And key to this is their partnership with PowerChip for eight inch scanning wafers. That's all about lowering costs and scaling up production for these new markets. And we're seeing that shift in their revenue too, moving away from consumer. Toward higher growth, hopefully higher margin enterprise sectors. That's the plan. Okay, so what are their actual key products? Well, it's built on their proprietary tech. GAN Power ICs integrated circuits replacing old silicon power chips. Like the GAN Fast for fast chargers? I think I've seen those. Those are the ones. Super fast, efficient. Then there's GAN Sense technology, which adds real-time sensing and control, mm. makes the chips smarter. And the silicon carbide part, that came from an acquisition. Right, Genesis and Canna. That's for the really high power stuff, EVs, data centers, big voltage, big power. What's compelling here is how they're positioning themselves as a sort of pure play innovator in this wide band gap space. Yeah, despite being relatively small, market cap around $1.25 billion, they've gotten serious traction, especially that NVIDIA partnership. That feels huge. NVIDIA is the name in AI hardware right now. It's massive validation. It tells the industry the Vitas tech is, you know, the, the real deal for high performance computing, not just lab stuff. So their main pitch, their value proposition, is basically solving the power problem, making things smaller, lighter, more efficient. Precisely. For AI data centers, think cutting energy losses by 30%, tripling power density. That's huge savings for hyperscalers. Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they must love hearing that. Every watt counts at that scale. Oh, absolutely. Which puts Navitas right in the middle of this uh, multi-trillion dollar electrification opportunity, as the industry calls it. The demand is just exploding, right? AI, EVs, renewables. It really is. Navitas thinks the AI data center market alone for GAN and C2 could be $2.6 billion annually by 2030. Wow, a big target. But the competition must be fierce. It's intense. You've got other GAN companies, sure, but the real threat might be the legacy giants. Infineon, ST Micro, Texas Instruments, they have deep pockets and are investing heavily too. So how does Navitas stand out? Their main differentiator is integrated GAN ICs. They argue it simplifies design for customers compared to using separate discrete components. Makes sense, easier implementation. But their market share is still tiny, like 0.17%. Yeah, minuscule. It's an uphill climb, but it also screams growth potential if they execute well. And there are external pressures too, right? Like those China tariffs. Definitely. They specifically cited China tariff uncertainties as negatively impacting their Q3 2025 guidance. That's a real headwind. Okay, and getting to this market isn't easy. Huge barriers to entry. Massive. We're talking sustained R&D investment. They spent $15.5 million non-GAAP on operating expenses in just Q3 2025. Plus the patents, right? Building that IP moat, over 100 patents. Yep. And manufacturing complexity. 
<laughs> advantages. Brand recognition is growing, partly thanks to NVIDIA. That 8-inch GAN foundry could give them cost advantages down the line. And things like network effects, high switching costs from design wins. Exactly. Getting designed into a major product is sticky. It's not just a one-time sale. It locks in future revenue. All right, so that's the business landscape. Vision, tech, markets. But what about the people running the show? A company's only as good as its leadership. Let's move to Chapter 2, Management Evaluation. Okay, leadership. It's led by industry vets. Co-founder and CEO Gene Sheridan, he's got 25-plus years' experience track record of scaling businesses. Like at Bridgeco, apparently got 80% market share there. That kind of experience counts. And this whole strategic pivot we've been talking about, that's a big management move itself, right? It shows agility. It does. Adapting to the declining mobile market and industry headwinds, they've also been pretty transparent communication-wise. Like citing those China tariff issues for the guidance myths. Yeah, being upfront about challenges. Sometimes. But there's a potential flag here. We have to mention the insider selling. Ah, oh, what's the story there? Well, the data shows 47 insider sales versus just one purchase in the last six months. And that includes sales by the CEO, Sheridan, and the CFO, Todd Glickman. Hmm. That uh, does raise questions. If things are so promising, why are top execs selling significant amounts? It's a fair question. While there can be many reasons for insider sales, the pattern is noticeable. Mm -hmm. Does that square with the public transparency? It complicates things. Definitely complicates it. But then there's this massive counter signal, Director Ranbir Singh. Yes, this is fascinating. Singh, who's a genuine domain expert in power semiconductors, made a huge purchase, 18.6 million shares. Valued at what, around $164 million? That's an 8.7% stake in the company? Exactly. So how do you weigh that? Widespread selling from the C-suite versus this enormous vote of confidence from a director who really understands the technology. It's a puzzle. Two totally different narratives playing out. What about how they use their money? Capital allocation. Strategy is clearly focused on long-term growth. The Genesic acquisition fits that. They also raised $100 million in Q2 2025, netting $97 million cash. And that was specifically for the AI and energy infrastructure push. Correct. As you'd expect from a pre-profitability growth company, no dividends, no buybacks. Everything gets plowed back into R&D and scaling. Return on invested capital is negative then, obviously. Yeah. Expected during this heavy investment phase, their target is EBIT to break even when quarterly revenues hit the high $30 million range. Okay. Makes sense. Now for the part everyone watches closely, the numbers. How do the financials stack up? Time for chapter three, financial analysis. All right, key metrics. Market cap, as we said, around $1.25 billion. Small for the sector. Revenue trends. This is where it gets a bit rough, right? Yeah, significant challenges. Q2 2025 revenue was $14.49 million, down almost 30% year over year. Ouch. And trailing 12 months. TTM revenue, $68.17 million, down over 25% YOI. It reflects that strategic shift and the geopolitical headwinds we talked about. Okay. Profitability. Still in the red, I assume. Deeply. Net profit margins are uh, very negative. Netted are 338% in Q2 2025. But the gross profit margin is positive. TTM was about 27%. So the core business of selling the chips makes money, but operating expenses, especially R&D, are eating it all up and then some. That's the picture. And when they guide for non-GAAP gross margin, like 38.5% for Q3 2025, they're trying to show the underlying operational profitability, stripping out things like stock comp or one-off costs. Gives a slightly cleaner view of the core operations trend. Got it. Free cash flow. Consistently negative. They're definitely burning cash to grow. Negative $4.24 million in Q2 25. But liquidity looks okay for now. Supported by the $161 million in cash and the recent $97 million raise. Exactly. Financial stability wise, persistent losses over five years, yeah. actually increasing annually by about 22%. But the balance sheet is clean, low debt. Very clean. Debt to equity is tiny, 0 .02, yeah. basically debt free. And the current ratio is strong at 5.61. Excellent short-term liquidity. No dividend, of course. Okay, valuation. PE is useless since they're losing money. What about price to sales? PS is high. TTM is 16.7x, forward is 14.4x. That's way above the industry average of maybe 7.5x. Meaning the market is already baking in a lot of future growth. Absolutely. You'd need a very optimistic discounted cash flow model, assuming really high growth rates, like maybe 31% annually, to hit $153 million revenue by 2028, plus capturing a big chunk of that AI market. And you'd use a high discount rate because of the risk. Which brings us back to those analyst price targets, $1.50 to $26.76. It perfectly illustrates the extreme uncertainty. Wildly different views on whether they can actually deliver that growth. 
It really is a high stakes bet. Okay, we've looked inside the company. How is the market reacting to this whole story? What's the sentiment out there? Let's check out chapter four, market sentiment. Wall Street analysts. Overall consensus is neutral. The average 12 month price target is $6.24. But that average hides the real story, which is the massive disagreement. Morgan Stanley at $1.50, Needham and Rosenblatt at $8. Exactly. Fundamental disagreement among the experts. And the media impact has been pretty dramatic too. Like that huge spike after the NVIDIA news, 165% in one day. Yeah, shows how much excitement there is around the AI angle. Yeah. But then Q2 earnings got a mixed reaction. Revenue beat forecast, but the loss was bigger than expected. So lots of volatility reflects <laughs> that tension, right? Long-term promise versus the tough near-term financials. Definitely. And look at the market indicators. Short interest is high, 27.36% of the float. That's a big chunk of investors betting against the stock. A significant bearish signal. What about moving averages? Well, the current price, around $5.86, is below the 50-day moving average, which is about $6.93. Suggests the short-term bearish trend. Okay, but? But it's still well above the 200-day moving average, which is around $4.01. So the longer-term trend still looks bullish, despite the recent pullback. That contradiction again. Short-term pain, maybe, but long-term hope. It really sums up Navitas right now. Perfectly. A company in flux, fighting headwinds, but aiming for something big down the road. Okay, so who actually holds the shares? Who are the owners? Let's break down Chapter 5, Ownership Structure. Institutional investors, the big funds, hold about 42% of the stock. And what were they doing recently, buying or selling? Mixed bag in Q2 2025. Some big names like Renaissance Technologies, Millennium Management added shares, but others like 0.72, Ameriprise, completely exited their positions. A real tug of war among the big players. What about insiders? Insiders hold about 12%, roughly $182 million worth. But again, that contradictory picture persists. The 47 sales versus one purchase, including the CEO and CFO selling. Exactly, which makes that one huge purchase by director Ron Beer Singh stand out even more. Right, that $164 million buy. A massive statement from someone who presumably knows the tech inside out. It's such a key data point against the selling trend. Absolutely critical counter signal. Otherwise, the ownership is pretty spread out. The general public, retail investors, hold a big chunk, about 5%. Meaning the stock price could be pretty sensitive to news and public sentiment. Very susceptible, yeah. yeah. Retail sentiment can swing these things quite a bit. Okay, we're getting a clearer picture, but it's complex. Before we wrap up, we absolutely need to assess the risks and potential rewards systematically. Which brings us to Chapter 6, Risk Assessment. Let's do a quick SWOT analysis. Strengths. Strengths. Definitely technological leadership. Pioneer status, 100 plus patents in Gansik, strategic partnerships in NVIDIA, Xiaomi, huge validation, strong financials in terms of low debt, good yeah. current ratio, cash runway, right. and experienced management. Let's just Weaknesses, unprofitability and cash burn are the big ones. Negative income, negative free cash flow. Recent revenue declines that near 30% drop yo why in Q2 is concerning, and the high R&D investment needed constantly strains expenses. Opportunities. Seems like there are plenty if they can execute. Massive addressable market AI data centers, $2.6 B's target by 2030 alone, EVs, renewables. The strategic pivot itself is an opportunity to get into higher value markets and improve margins, and potential economies of scale from that 8-inch foundry deal. All right, and finally, threats. What could derail this? Threats, intense competition, both legacy giants and other GAN players, adoption risk will customers switch from silicon quickly enough, market hype versus reality, the stock's high volatility, beta near 3.0, macro factors, interest rates, inflation, and those geopolitical risks, especially China tariffs and trade policy swings. That's a pretty balanced view of the landscape. Lots of potential, lots of hurdles. Let's try and bring all these pieces together. For our final thoughts, Chapter 7, Conclusion. Okay, synthesizing all this. Navitas is clearly at a critical inflection point. There's this really compelling long-term vision. Smashing up against some very real, significant near-term challenges. Let's break down the bull and bear cases one last time. The bull case. They're pioneers in a huge high growth market. AI, EVs, renewables. Key partnerships like NVIDIA validate the tech and open doors. The strategic pivot should improve margins, strong balance sheet, cash runway, basically no debt and that huge insider buy from Ranbir Singh. A powerful set of arguments. Now, the bear case. Deeply unprofitable, burning cash consistently. Significant recent revenue decline, nearly 30% drop in Q2. High valuation PS ratio that already assumes massive future success. Widespread insider selling from the top brass. 
High execution risk on the pivot. Intense competition. Geopolitical louds. It's a weighty list on both sides. Definitely. And the valuation summary just highlights this tension. Current price, 5.865 cents. Analyst targets a dollar fifty to eight dollars. Community estimates even wider, two dollars and twenty-six dollars and twenty-six dollars and seventy-six cents. That massive spread just keeps hammering home the extreme uncertainty. There is absolutely no consensus on this company's future value. It really depends on which narrative you believe more. So for our concluding outlook, Navitas Semiconductor, it's not your classic value stock, not with the unprofitability and unpredictable cash flow. No, it's really a quintessential high conviction, long-term growth play. You have to believe in the story, believe in the pivot. And you absolutely need a high tolerance for volatility and execution risk because its future really hinges entirely on management pulling off this transition. Transforming that vision, moving from phone chargers to p powering the AI revolution into mm -hmm. a profitable reality. That's the whole game. So here's a final thought for you, our listener. Considering AI's unprecedented need for energy efficiency, but also seeing this stark division among experts. Yeah. How do you weigh the revolutionary promise of Navidas's tech against the harsh present-day financials and the huge risks of this strategic pivot? It's the key question investors have to grapple with. We really hope this deep dive into Navitas Semiconductor has given you a truly well-informed perspective. For more expert analysis like this and priority access to deep dives on specific tickers. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Stock Analytics AI YouTube channel. That's right. Stock Analytics AI members get priority deep dives. We're covering all of the S&P 500 stocks over the next few months, and members get that exclusive priority access. Want a one-off deep dive on a stock you follow? Just drop us a super thanks. And the necessary disclaimer. This analysis was generated by an AI system for educational purposes only. It should not be considered financial advice. Please always conduct your own research or consult with a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive. We look forward to exploring another stack of sources with you very soon.